Hey guys, it's Kevin in my review for Jungle Cruise. So what Jungle Cruise is essentially about is basically we center on this skipper named Frank. He is very shrewd and he basically likes to um, go on these very cheap uh, sort of cruises and kind of swindle people into not getting their full money's worth and things like that. But basically, we also focus on uh, this character of Dr. Lily Houghton. She is this botanist of sorts and... She's trying to find this thing called the uh, the Tree of Life. Essentially, it's this tree that uh, heals people and has all these different sort of, you know, specialties to it and all of these powers, and she really kind of wants to get to the bottom of it. And in order for her to track down this tree, her and her brother do need a skipper. So they do team up with Frank in hoping to uh, find this tree once and for all before it gets into the wrong hands. So Jungle Cruise, I'm not gonna lie, I was not particularly excited for this film. I think Disney, you know, overall has kind of been struggling when it comes to live action films lately, and Jungle Cruise just seemed like a very middle-of-the-road film for me that was basically just kind of like banking off the talents of its two stars. None of the marketing really did much for me or excited me, so I really did not expect all that much from this film. In fact... I hate saying this because I, you know, do not really like the idea of it at all, but this was a film where, you know, Premiere Access has been a thing for several Disney Plus films. I decided to give it a try for this one because I didn't really care that much about this film. So I did, in fact, watch um, this one, and I gotta say, I was actually pleasantly surprised. Jungle Cruise is actually a really fun um adventure film. I think it's a really nice throwback to sort of the, you know, very fun and uh, action-packed films that Disney used to do back in the day, like Pirates of the Caribbean or something like that. And overall, I think could very well spawn a very fun and successful uh, franchise moving forward. But we are just getting to right now, starting off with the cast. And I have to say, that is absolutely one of the things that definitely does make this movie. I think if the cast was not as good as they were, I don't think this movie would be as good. And I'll just say right now, both Dwayne Johnson and Emily Blunt do some fantastic work here. Dwayne Johnson is perfectly cast as this very, like, cynical guy who he's very, like, jaded and things like that, but he also thinks that he is very much like this hot shot of sorts. He's constantly making these jokes that don't make a lot of people laugh, but he thinks they're very funny. Um, and I think he does a good job with that, but he also has a bit more heart to him than I really was expecting, and I think Johnson embodied this character very well. I really like what he ended up doing. He's a very charismatic guy already, but I think he was able to add a few more layers to this character that otherwise wouldn't have been there, and so I really did enjoy his performance, but Emily Blunt is absolutely the star of this entire movie. I mean, she kind of walks away with the whole thing here uh, as this character of Lily Houghton, who she's very adventurous and eccentric, but she also very much does solidify herself as, I think, a true action star in this movie. I mean, she kicks a lot of ass here. It's very convincing what she ends up doing, and the dynamic that she has with Jane, Dwayne Johnson, these two work so well off of each other. I really enjoyed their dynamic in the film, and I think the film is worth watching alone just for their performances. However, the other performance I really do want to highlight here that I wasn't expecting to like as much as I did was Jack Whitehall in this film. Jack Whitehall does, of course, play Lily's brother and does a pretty great job at doing so. He is very much like this very uppity and like proper character, but there's a little bit more going on with him. I think he kind of is like the heart of this movie, and I really did enjoy what he ended up doing. He was very funny, but he, like I said, had a bit more heart than I was expecting, and I I really enjoyed uh, his role here. I thought he was definitely a lot of fun. Um... And I really enjoyed his performance. But I do have to say, the one thing going into this movie that I knew would deliver, and I was, you know, I would be really upset if he didn't, and that's Jesse Plemons, who, I mean, anytime you get him in a movie, he's probably going to give one hell of a performance. And I've said it before, he is such a strong character actor, especially when he is playing a character that is as deranged and just out of his mind as the one he's playing in here is. I mean, the character that he's playing is insane of Prince Joachim. I mean, he will basically, you know, 
do he basically will do whatever it takes to make sure that he gets this tree uh nothing stands in his way he's absolutely relentless in that way and he's very ruthless and cutthroat and i i really loved uh his character a lot he was so much fun to watch here he has all the makings of what you want a really just silly villain to be and he really does relish every second of it he does he has a, you can tell he is having so much fun with this role and i really love love what he ended up doing here. He's so goofy and out there, but I think it really does work for this kind of role. So I really did enjoy his performance. I think the rest of the cast overall does a really good job here too, and definitely was one, was a lot more impressive than I overall expected them to be. But the directing here from Wam Colette Sarah as well, uh, I think is also a big standout in this movie. I think something he does really well is that he makes this film legitimately a lot of fun. He knows that, you know, how much fun this can really be. So he really does I think dive head first into just the fun of everything and I think it really does work as a result and we know that he really does have a knack when it comes to action set pieces and he really does remind you of that here I mean the way that he constructs this film I think he does a really good job with directing it but there also is a lot more of a genuine sense of heart that I wasn't expecting and I thought he directed that very well too I think the film overall is just a lot of fun and his directing is a big reason for that but I also want to talk about the screenplay in this movie because that's that's something that I also was pleasantly surprised by. I think the story on paper does seem very basic. You know, you have the skipper that is, again, just very sort of sleazy and cynical. Um, and then you have, you know, uh, Emily Blunt, who's just kind of scrappy and adventurous, and she doesn't really seem to have a care in the world in terms of, you know, what she's really doing, but there's a little bit more going on with both of those characters, and that's something I really did appreciate, especially when it comes to Dwayne Johnson. He is not just this, like, very cocky, you know, um, skipper. There actually is a little bit more going on with them. They get a lot more into, like, his backstory and what really led him to this point, and I was surprised by by how well it really did play out for me. I, I really did find myself invested um, in his story by the end of the film, and that's something else that I, I really did end up appreciating. And there's a bigger purpose as to why he cares about this tree. Why is he doing what he's doing? And... I thought it made the whole concept that much more believable, and I thought they did a pretty good job with that. And the same goes for Lily as well, especially her relationship with her brother. That was actually very sweet and something I wasn't expecting to care as much as I did. I mean, it's not just like her brother is like this very spoiled character that's never, you know, gotten himself into any sort of risky type situations before. Would never, You would never expect for him to be on like this boat and have like dirt on him and things like that like yeah that's a lot of fun but there is a genuine bond that these two have you know this is someone that he does deeply care about his sister has always kind of looked after him and you really do feel that bond in the movie and I, I thought they did a good job with that but I would also be remiss if I didn't mention that yes once again Disney does try to attempt to have that be that uh like first gay character type scene, but I think this time around it's actually done a lot better because it isn't just like a blink and you miss it sort of thing. Like most of the time they do it, it's a character that doesn't serve much of a purpose in the story. Um, they talk about it for like a minute and then it like just kind of goes away and it feels very much like Disney you know, trying to pander uh, to people. It feels more like Disney doing it because they, they feel they need, like, forced representation in their movie, but I feel like here it felt a lot more genuine and actually did serve a bit more of a purpose in the story, and one of those things where, like, they can't just, like, cut it out for, like, China or something like that. Like, it's it actually serves a much larger purpose, and that's something I did appreciate. So, Disney is getting better at that. They still have a long way to go before it can actually be, like, genuine, um, but it's good to see that they are sort of taking that criticism to heart and actually did something a little bit better than what we expected, so I did like that. I liked the way they, they handled that overall. I think the world building is very interesting here, too. You know, you understand why they want this tree, what it's really gonna do for them, and I think they do 
a pretty good job with that. And then who they're ending up, you know, facing against, uh, Jesse Plemons' character, is a lot of fun. I mean, you recognize that he is someone that is just so conniving. He will do literally whatever it takes to get his hands on this, uh, on this object. And just the way what he decides to do, you know, the things that he says, it's just insane. And I was surprised by how funny he really was. I knew I would like him in this movie, but I was surprised by how much I really liked him. And I thought they did a really good job with that. So overall, I was very impressed with the screenplay here. Uh, getting into the cinematography, I know this is something that a lot of people have been kind of 50-50 on. Uh, the practical effects are amazing. I think that the costume design especially, you really do feel like you're in this time period along the ride with them, and I think they do a really good job with that. Um, and the visual effects, I actually didn't think were too bad. Yes, there's a lot of CGI in this movie, but I didn't feel that it was that bad. Like, yeah, there's a tiger and things like that, but it, it didn't really take me out of the movie. I actually found it to be a lot of fun, and I thought it was some of the better CGI I've seen, and a live action Disney film in quite a bit. I will say there are some elements where it can look a little bit like, oh yeah, that's very obviously CGI, but it never took me out of the movie in the way I expected it to, so I actually didn't mind a lot of the cinematography here. And the action sequences as well, I think are actually really well constructed here. There are a lot that had me very much on the edge of my seat, and they were very believable, and I think they were very investing, and I, I thought overall they were very well directed. I, I really enjoyed a lot of the action here. There's one action set piece especially involving these pirates that uh, the three main characters entangle, and it's really fun. Uh, the way that whole thing was done, it was like so swashbuckling, and it's exactly the kind of action that you want to see in a movie like this. And like I said, I legitimately think that while this has been kind of like a uh, very disappointing, like, summer for movies. This one's, like, feels like what a summer movie should be. It's just kind of a lot of fun and very easy, you know, you're very easily able to just, like, get lost and just how fun everything is, and I, I think this film really embodies that well when it comes to the action. Another big highlight of this film, though, has to be the score by James Newton Howard, which, I mean, if you want a score that is just gonna perfectly just put you into the mindset of this movie, something that's very adventurous and fun, Look no further than his score here. I mean, he does such a great job with just keeping you so invested in what's going on. It's a score that I constantly find myself humming, and it shows why he's one of the best uh, composers working today for a film like this. So I really like what he ended up doing in terms of the score here. I think he heightened the tension. He heightened the fun. He just did such a great job when it came to... Uh, the musical score in this film, and the editing. Yes, this film is two hours, and I won't lie, I di it did take me a little bit to fully get into it. I think once we met Dwayne Johnson's character, that's really when I started to get into this more, um, and I do think it can drag in some aspects, but I do appreciate the fact that this film does take its time in telling this story. It's never afraid to kind of slow down and get you to really know these characters, and I thought they did a pretty good job with that. That being said, this film is not perfect. They're definitely are some things that do kind of bring it down for me. Um, one of them being that the character of Agide, who really is like the main villain in this film, yes, you have Yakim, but he's kind of secondary. Agide really is like who we're following here. Um, his character, I just found to be kind of one note. He has a really good like opening monologue, and I was like, okay, this could be really interesting, but I felt he was more like a plot device than anything. I didn't really feel like his character was really all that well fleshed out. There's like a bit of a backstory with him, but I thought that it was more like a, sh it was sort of like a show not tell thing. I would have rather uh, had them, you know, actually see it rather than them just say it to us. And I just felt that his character overall just didn't really do a ton for me. And also Paul Giamatti in this movie. I liked him in this movie. I did. He's playing this really over the top character with this ridiculous accent, but he is not in this movie nearly enough to the point where I really don't understand what what the purpose of him really was. I think they could have done a lot more with that character overall, and I was kind of let down by just how little he had to do in this movie. I would have thought they gave him a little bit more to do, but unfortunately, I don't really feel like they did. I think he could have definitely uh, had more to do overall. And I will say, there is something that happens in the third act of this film uh, between some characters that I just felt to be a little bit shoehorned in and a little too cliche, and I just didn't feel really fit in line with what they had set up before. 
before. But other than that, this is surprisingly a way more fun and engaging film than I really did expect. It's got some legitimately really fun action sequences, some really strong performances from Dwayne Johnson, Emily Blunt, Jack Whitehall, and Jesse Plemons. It sets up a world that I legitimately would want to see more of. I do think that if they wanted to make another one, which I'm already hearing that they are, I definitely am not against it. And I think in a summer where there just hasn't been a lot of very good summer blockbusters, Jungle Cruise, surprisingly, is one of the more entertaining ones that I've seen all year. This film is a ton of fun. It very much was a throwback to those sort of adventure films that Disney used to make back in the day, and it's definitely one of their better live-action films in quite a bit. So I am going to give Jungle Cruise overall a B-. minus. For over guys, in my review of Jungle Cruise, the most you guys saw this movie, all left your thoughts, and we'll see you guys in my next video, and we'll see you guys for that. Okay, bye.